Good morning, everyone. Um, this morning, I'm going to be moving our chicks into a larger brooder. We got them about two and a half weeks ago, um, these Freedom Ranger broilers. And um, they've just taken off in size this past week. They've definitely exceeded the confines of their current home. And I think it's time to put them in the tractor with maybe some pine shavings on the floor. It's getting a little cold at night here this next week, so I'll keep them inside for the next week, but it should be hitting grass. Probably the end of next, but. As you can see, uh, the tips of the walls from the pine bedding is pretty, pretty close. So it's pretty often that I come down here and find one hanging up on top or find one running around the garage. And it's just not safe for the little bird to be running around back here, but um, yeah. It's going to move over. We will be uh, pasturing them in the Skokovich style chicken pastures. Got one of our egg layers out of her uh, fencing right now. But what are you doing out here? Yeah, but one of them I finished the stapling on this morning. And yeah. so I'm thinking about just pulling this into the garage. So they're indoors. Definitely wasn't the prettiest move, but I guess sometimes you gotta test the structural rigidity of uh, your tractors and whatever you build. So, all right. Got it lined up here. Should be just narrow enough to squeeze through. I did most of the finishing touches outside just because of size limitations in my garage, but yeah, time to scoot her in and get those birds moved over. So I set up a little corral for them with their existing brooder panels to go into the door of their larger brooder. And they're pretty scared of it right now. I might give them a little bit to warm up move their food in there and get them curious about getting into their new space. But I'm not sure. I don't want to scare them into there and make it like a scary place and like hard in that transition. But I also don't want to watch them peck around it for 24 hours. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see uh, we'll see how quickly they take to it once their food's in there. Right now, I'm just putting down some fresh pine shavings into the new coop where I'm gonna put their food and water to hopefully draw them in. But I don't wanna put it too far back because I am gonna pull this further into my garage so that I can access my washer and dryer, which are currently trapped behind the new brooder. Okay, so food and water, food set up. I think I'm gonna leave water over there and kind of slowly roll them into here. But yeah, hopefully they take to it pretty quick. I'll check back later. Looks like they're starting to get kind of curious about what's happening over there. You can see one of our egg layers over there checking out what all the excitement in here is about. There's a few of them all kind of picking up the little bit of food I dusted on the door rail. It is absolute chaos in here right now, guys. We need to uh, maybe give them a little more time <laughs> um, before they step in there. But I will definitely be checking back shortly with all of you. Um, crossing my fingers that we have a smooth and easy transition. All right, everyone. Talk to you later. I think I'm going to give them a little box to perch up on and peek inside of there. Um, I think I could be overthinking it and maybe they just need some time, but I'm excited to get them transitioned in there. I think they'll be way happier. 
while I was grabbing the dome, the first one hopped in, and once they breach that barrier, it is only a matter of time. Yep. Come on, pop over. Fresh bedding and lots of food in there. Alright, so now that the first ones are over, I'm just gonna kind of let nature take its course and yeah. Okay, so I built a little mound over by the entrance of their new brooder with a humidity dome that we had for our seedlings. And it looks like that might be the key. They're super interested. There's, I didn't use clean pine shavings on it. It was the stuff under their food bowls. So there's plenty of food up there. So I'm thinking that that could be the ticket. All right. As I'm working through some of these things popping up, you can definitely tell it's my first time raising chickens of this quantity. Uh, our first batch was about 11 birds, um, and now having 52 meat birds is definitely, uh, definitely different. Uh, the amount of maintenance and care that they require, but um, at the end of the day, it's kind of the same stuff. Keep them dry, warm, and fed, and they're all happy, so. Yeah, kind of learning as we go, but I'm excited to kind of take you guys along with me on that journey and hopefully you pick up some stuff for when you get some chickens of your own. All right, so after about an hour, we've had a successful transition. Um, they all made their way in when they were looking for food and water. I um, was able to shut the door, scoot it forward in my garage so I can get the back door closed to reduce drafts on them. This is much cozier and because it is their permanent chicken tractor, it's sealed in, so I shortened it up, probably about two feet on the end. So it is like a bit larger than they need, but because it's lined with two by fours on the bottom, it does give me the flexibility to do the full four inches for the deep bedding um, without it spilling over out of the hardware cloth. But yeah, they look really happy in here. Stoked eating food. I'm really loving the height flexibility that the light stand gives me with their water. Um, I can constantly move it up. There's some, this is all fresh bedding right now, so um, it's a little higher than it will be in a few hours, but yeah, it's, it's super easy to move up. It's on a chain so that when I do need to make adjustments, it's super simple. All I have to do is move it up a rung on the chain and we're good to go. These brooder plates have also been great. Um, I was using heat lamps last year, and while those, uh, they work fine, they do have like the risk of fire, and there are some of those like, concerns surrounding them. So this is nice, it's in my garage, directly under my bedroom where uh, we all sleep, so it's nice kind of not having to think about that. The chicks seem happy. We had some cold nights when we first got them, and they were all huddled up under, you know, so I think it was like really warm. Some of them were even hanging out a little bit. So even our, in our uninsulated garage, the heating plate was plenty for a below freezing night. I'm not sure if I will go directly to using the tractor as the brooder for the next round of meat birds that I have coming in the middle of summer. Just because the uh, outside panels being hardware cloth. I guess there's like a higher probability of draft. It'll be warmer then, so that might not have to be something I have to worry about. But I'll have to do more research on that. Because it is nice having it closed off so they can't fly out. Um, and also like limiting the amount of infrastructure that I have to build. You know, there's a lot of um, really, really great breeder plans out there. But on my small homestead, we have two chicken tractors, a coop, and I'm planning to build another coop um, this winter. So, um, you know, the space fills up pretty quick, especially in storage in the off season, but I'm 
I've seen some really, really great plans floating around for some of the other YouTubers, like So The Land uh, just built one. Definitely check his out. But yeah, just trying to like limit the amount of infrastructure I have on this first year of Meat Birds. You know, there's like a lot of stuff you have to build and get just to um, kind of get it going. But, you know, it's it's been really fun this far and I'm really, really excited about tasting them. <laughs> Not to be crude while we're looking at babies eating, but it is definitely the elephant in the room here. That is about it for my brooder update. I'll go into more detail about some of the other pieces in there, uh, why I favor some equipment compared to others, and what it just worked for me. You know, even just being on my second round of raising chickens, uh, so much has changed inside my brooder from the first time um, that has led to a lot of increased efficiency and just like an easier experience overall. So I hope I can share that with you and save you guys some cash on buying new stuff because of frustration or because it breaks or doesn't work out. Um, there's a lot of avenues I took trying to like find cost savings the first time around that backfired on me. And uh, this time around I feel like I found like a good healthy middle ground um, to get everything going at like a reasonable um, barrier to entry cost. But yeah, it's been a great time so far and I'm excited to take you guys along from here on out.